Uh, Guys, I have a confession to make. I love Manosphere. As much as I criticize them, I also love them. They are the Batman to my Joker. You have comedians like Yad. The dude is sprinting after a woman. You have PUAs. So this is a skill uh, where you speak non-stop. You have Sigma male group. Delusional, low status man thinking they are 3D chess playing James Bonds. Then you have glorious m reacting to 18-year-old chicks on TikTok. <laughs> oh, I will go my own way. Is this what you want? When I go my own way, you will see them. You have alpha males. Oh, bro, you gotta hold the frame, bro. You are gonna make muscles. <laughs> I truly love Manosphere. They do and say those stuff with a straight face. <laughs> At times, I have to check to make sure they are not being sarcastic. They are saying the most absurd stuff with the straightest face. You gotta make sure they are not parody channels. Now, today's topic was brought to my attention by a supporter. And when I gave it a watch before I decided to make this commentary on it, I was checked out. Check out! Multiple times throughout the clip. And the viewer who sent me the link was right. This is indeed a brutal watch, man. I am warning you once again. This is likely gonna be another round of cringe overdose challenge. The last time you didn't listen to my warning. I told you with that yet stop video. But of course, there were countless comments. Oh, I can't watch this video. Oh, rehab, bro. Cringe was so hard. I had to finish the video in three sessions. I told you. I told you it was gonna be a cringe overdose challenge. But I guess, you know, me being in this community for years now, I kinda grew immunity to it. So I am warning you again. This is another round of a nuclear blast of cringe. It is almost like superheroes unite their powers to create a hydrogen bomb. One of them is a well-known uh, Manosphere guy, Richard Copper, and the other dude is a prime Oofy Doofy. Before I roll the video and break it down along the way as we go, I am warning you one final time. This stuff is gonna be some serious cringe. Hey, Bob, are you in you. Amish country? What? Are you in Amish country? Amish country, why would you say that? Why would you say that? I'm in Florida. No man, the beard, because I was watching this uh, YouTube series and this guy went to Amish country and they have a very similar beard. Oh, with the, with the mustache removed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I just cut it today. Okay. Um, All right. So you've got a disrespectful wife. So what's happening? So I'm 27 now. Uh, I was 25 when I was dating her. Um, and one thing that I noticed now that I'm red pilled, um, mm -hmm. which was, I, I found your content after I got married, which was a okay. year and a half ago, yeah. um, was like, we were at a date and I told her, well, I, uh, I love wearing my Trump hat out in public. I just think mm -hmm. it was the, you know, make America great or keep America great, you know, Trump 2020 hat. Yeah. So um, she's like, oh, well, you can't wear that when we're going out in public together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's my First Amendment, right? Like, Imagine responding to your wife with something like, this is my First Amendment, right? <laughs> what the hell are you even talking about, brother? This is the worst answer you can give to your wife bossing you around. And his name is the most oofy doofy name you can imagine. I am not sure if he chose a fake name, a fake generic name, but if you asked me to think of an oofy doofy name, I would say Bob. <laughs> Goofy sounding and too generic. Perfect fit. That's too bad. She's like, no, the, the, I, I, you, you, can't, you, you, you can't do that. And I mm -hmm. think I went with it at first and then I had my doubts. I was like, is she going to keep on talking to me like this? She will definitely keep talking to you like that because she knows you have no other options. She's not afraid to lose you because she was never attracted to you. Mm. And then, I mean, recently we've been having arguments over stupid stuff. Have you read my book? I've listened to almost, or I've watched almost all of your videos. Okay, um, so this is what cracks me up, man. A guy like Bob watching copper videos and thinking he's that guy. Meanwhile, isn't respected even by his own wife. So, I mean, I've probably mentioned it in a video before, but men go through betatization through a thousand concessions. So that's an example of one concession there, yeah, right? Know. It's like, I like my Trump hat. She doesn't like your Trump hat. She tells you to stop wearing the Trump hat. So you go, okay. Right. And then you comply. So that, so that would be one concession. So this is an example for those of you that are watching of what one concession looks like in betatization through a thousand concessions. So I'm willing to bet since she said she's disrespectful, she's done this more than once.
I know a lot of you is watching this might think copper here makes sense, but he doesn't. He really doesn't, man. Copper is coping and I am gonna tell you why. Betaization, he says. Brother, that betaization you mentioned happened a long time ago, to the full extent. It happened in approximately 13 milliseconds when she first laid her eyes on him. But yes, uh, his call on that not being the first time is true. That is correct. Well, what we've... I mean, recently we've been having like stupid arguments. I mean, yeah, like, like now I have the Let's Go Brandon hat, so she won't allow, let me. Let's Go Brandon hat. You can't make this up, man. I don't mean to talk trash to you, to Trump supporters among you, but it is just funny. Picturing this guy, his goofy face with a Let's Go Brandon hat. I mean, I am not invested in mainstream American politics either way, but this is a signature oofy-doofy move. Imagine walking around with a Trump or Biden hat. Even his political debt is oofy-doofy level. This guy is literally the personification of oofy-doofy, in flesh and blood. You will see more as we go. This is nothing. Bob is truly something else, man. To work you know, wear that in public or even when I'm out mowing the lawn because she's like, oh, I don't want our neighbors to see that, that, that you're, that you haven't, let's go Brandon with the FJB on the side. Mm -hmm. And like recently it's just been stupid stuff. Like tonight it was the toilet seat. Like she was like, you, you have to put the toilet seat down after you use the toilet. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, look, I value it. I know girls are. A major sign of oofy doofy marriage. Even the smallest stuff you do will start to annoy her. The way you walk, the way you breathe, everything you do will rub her the wrong way. Cause at that point she's just tolerating your existence. Like they're, they're like that, whatever. I was speaking to someone else who was like in my, in a similar position to me. He's like, yeah, dude, like married men go through this with the toilet seat. I was like, okay. Like she's been asking me for the past year and a half about the toilet seat. I told her, look, I, I can't like, remember every time i go to the bathroom in any ways i work okay for okay home. okay so. i got some questions for you because i yeah because i think i understand where you're at so you're 27 now i'm, I'm 27 and how old is she uh 26 okay and what do you do for a living um i'm in uh i'm in the aerospace industry okay and what does the missus do uh she's a teacher shocking yeah i i i feel like she talks down to me as a teacher and I'll be honest, like even once I mentioned to her, like, oh, there's, like, I was doing research, like, do all marriages suck? And then I, uh, I'll I tell found you what your... the problem is, Bob, is that, is that yes, you're unplugged, but you're still a beta. And, and every day, every week, every year that goes by, she's beta tizing you further. So you see the code in the matrix, you know what she's doing. You know, you understand the concept, but you allow it to happen. So you're still kind so, of like so, so I've, I've recently living in the matrix. Up. So, so I, I, I've been standing up recently. Like, I've, okay, and how's that working out for you? Like, I've, okay, and how's that working out for you? Like, I've, okay, and how's that working out for you? Basically, I'll say like, like for the toilet seat, I was like, look, like I want to meet your need. I can't promise you. And mm -hmm. then she like got really, really frustrated and like, and and it's not even with the toilet seat, but with other things, it's like. What did I tell you? Toilet seat isn't the only thing. She can't stand this guy, but is married to him because she needs his resources. One to two minutes discussing something. And then it's like name calling. And I'm like, no, you're not going to, I'm not going to let you call me that name. That's, mm. that's bullshit. Like you cannot call me stupid. You can't start cussing at me. Like I'm not, I'm not going to stand up. And then she just storms off and slams the door. She beta ties you. Then she starts to take away some of your rights and privileges. Like when you want to wear a hat, and, you know, what kind of shirt you want to wear when you're cutting the lawn. Like yeah. women will shit test you for your competency, you know, to make sure that she feels like she's with the best that she can get. And you've already failed a bunch of those shit tests and she's already beta ties you. So now she has this condition in her mind, like, well, I can talk to Bob like this, you know, I can call him stupid or I can, you know, tell him, tell him off for not putting the toilet seat in the right direction for. Uh. Again, to the untrained eye, it might sound as if Copper is absolutely right. The issue here is that Copper detects the effect right. The cause, not so much. His observation on the result, on the outcome is correct, of course, but the causation he tries to associate is not. You might question if it is a deliberate action on his part or just a genuine mistake. Wouldn't surprise me either way.
or woman should test man to see if he is the best she can get. And since you already failed that test, she doesn't respect you anymore. Brother, she lost that respect in 13 milliseconds. 13 milliseconds. She always knew he was just a safe bet. There ain't no shit test, brother. What she is doing is not testing him whether he was gonna pass it. But rather, it is just her being real. It is her keeping it real. She already married the dude, so she doesn't have to hide her true feelings, true emotions. She always, always had for him since the beginning. She married him because, you know, he has a much better job, much better income than her. She's a freaking kindergarten teacher, man. Come on, Cooper. It is time to stop coping. To be to be honest with you, something like this to try to fix it is very hard. I don't even I don't even want to get involved, right? I mean, like, look, if you want to book me privately and we'll do a couple hours of, of coaching, I'm expensive, right? Yeah, I don't have like, that money. People, we have we have a counselor here he, that we go to for counseling. Okay, well, that like clearly this marriage is not working out, right? Pay closer attention here, guys. Closer attention to his words. Notice how he's trying to steer the conversation to his private sessions. Then he says, now, this is not an easy task to fix. It is going to take some time to retake her shit tests. He knows that in the next step, he's going to steer the conversation to his private sessions. You always got to look beyond what people say. Don't look at what people tell you. You gotta try to see the motivation behind it. And again, guys, I am just pointing out this because to the untrained eye, this will be missed. I am sure there are a lot of people among you who didn't catch that when they were watching. It is not what he says, but rather when and how he says it. Oh, this marriage is obviously not working. He's trying to say, what did all those counselors you hired accomplish? What did they accomplish? Nothing. A big fat zero. So it is time to pay me. Context matters. Yes, the marriage obviously is failing, but he says that right after Bob mentions that he already goes to counselors and that he doesn't want to pay Richard Copper. So you are going to pay me if you want to save this marriage. And his one hour session is $4,000. Imagine paying that, bro. But then again, he probably knows his audience. He's thinking, bro, of course they are going to pay that. Do these guys look like the sharpest tools in the shed? And you might be red-pilled, but if you think that this is going to work out with some other chick, you're still red-pilled oh. beta. Oh, I'm not getting married again. Like, screw that. Like Dating, if, if, you know, dating, you know, divorced. maybe you invite her in, you get a dog together sort of thing. You know, What he's implying, the message he's trying to instill in his victim sets. Unless you pay me, you are going to keep having these problems. Cause guys, understand this. Even though what he says here explicitly is, unless you do the work. He doesn't say you got to pay me explicitly. But since Richard Cooper knows... Red pill is a complete BS and that uh, doing the work stuff will never produce the desired outcome for people like Bob. And Cooper knows that, of course. He knows that Bob is going to fail no matter how he tries to execute that plan, whatever plan. So Bob will inevitably think, OK, look, counselors didn't work. What I tried on my own didn't work. Free advice I found on the Internet didn't work. So it is time to pay Cooper. Pay attention to the message between Cooper's lines and you will realize his scheme. Notice how he is like, oh, surely you are going to try to date again, right? Come on, dude, give me something to work with here. I need to show you why you need to pay me 4000 an hour. Now, maybe you change your mind five, 10 years down the road. If you're still the same guy right now, just like the last one, beta ties you because you couldn't stand up for yourself and say, what's wrong with you putting the toilet seat down, you know, the direction that you want? Well, like, what are you like, bothering well, with me? With this so she says it's dis it's it's disgusting and nasty when she walks in and sees the toilet seat up. Yeah, well, when you guys were dating, did she give you a hard time about the toilet seat? Um, I love how he takes so long to make sure he doesn't expose himself, <laughs> cause you know the answer, bro. Um, um, they didn't even date long before marrying. You really think she would date this guy? She married him for the money. She's not gonna waste her time dating this dude. <laughs> her dating years was reserved for better looking men, taller men during her prime years. I love how uh, Bob is like, what do you mean dating? Like his facial expression says it all. What do you mean dating, bro? <laughs> the fact that he took 35 minutes to answer gives you the insight you need. If you didn't get that insight in 13 milliseconds, when you first saw his face in the beginning of the video. Um, right. I mean, so why the fuck even... is it a problem now? 
I mean, she asked me like towards the beginning of our marriage and like I tried to sometimes. But yeah, but again, when you were dating, was the toilet seat a problem for? Oh, we, we weren't living together when we were dating. It doesn't matter. She, you know, she came over, you went over to her place, right? Like it wasn't a problem then, right? Now all of a sudden it's a problem. You see what I'm saying, right? right. It's like, I don't know why it's... it's like, why wasn't it a problem, you know, for you before? And now it's a problem today, right? Like I got shit I got to do. Like, don't bother me with this. And then you walk away. Except when he says that with his current looks, uh, oh, I got shit to do, don't bother me with this again. It will only drive her even crazier. It will only make her angrier. She won't be like, oh, okay, I bow down to your unplugged alpha cringe energy. She will use that line as an excuse to gaslight him, to take him to the divorce court and take his money. She is just looking for the right excuse to maximize her payday. And if you follow self-proclaimed unplugged alphas like Copper, you will be giving her exactly that. Oh, he didn't take our problems seriously. He never wants to talk about our problems like adults and address them properly. He just brushed me off saying don't bother me with this stuff. He just dismissed me when I tried to save this marriage. Yeah, I tried to save this marriage, but he was not communicative. Your honor, please bury this guy under a prison and boom you are being taken to a black site to be never heard of again the work that you got to do on yourself is going to pay dividends maybe not in this relationship but probably in the next one to fix something like this dude it's very hard four thousand dollars hard to be specific the fact that he still implies that his marriage could be saved is laughable no dude get real she didn't lose respect for him because she never respected him in the first place. Oh, she lost respect because you didn't hold frame, bro. He lost that respect in 13 milliseconds when she first laid her eyes on him. It's, it's in my view, not worth it. In my view, cut ties. Do you guys have kids? No kids and she's not pregnant. Cut ties, get divorced. The only correct advice, the only correct thing he said. Yes, that relationship is over. Technically, it isn't even over because it never began. Don't cry because it is over. Cry because it never began. Toil up when I feel like it. Once you figure yourself out and you level yourself up, you know, you develop yourself as a man, you know, become the unplugged alpha sort of thing, right? Then you'll be in a better position to make better choices with women. But I mean, you got leveling up to do for yourself. Yeah, but that, uh, so 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 I don't want to take too much of your time, but I think like I sh I'm a pretty like high value man. Like I have a good. No. When I gave this video a watch before making this commentary, hearing this got me checked out at the spot, bro. I legit had to take a break. Like this guy Bob just called himself a high value man. If you can believe that. Bro, your kindergarten teacher wife is calling you stupid. Your face is sub 5. Your SMV is even lower. Then you are a manlet, only 5'8". Like, what kind of high value are you talking about here, brother? This is one of the coppers who thinks uh, just because he was able to get a good job, uh, he is that guy, you know, one of the money coppers. Or oh, I am a high value guy. Bro, it ain't about the job. It is all about being genetically high value. That is where the real high value lies. It is like a chicken trying to self-improve to fly. You know, not gonna happen. Unless you make a change on genetic level, not gonna happen. No matter how much hard work. All these sub-8, sub-bar, 5 foot something men watching these plug channels. Unplugged alpha. Unplugged fitness. You know, unplugged sigma. Unplugged delta. Unplugged plug. <laughs> you know, zillions of plug combinations right there. What they are trying to unplug and plug is, they are trying to plug a triangle object into a circle. Not gonna happen. Not gonna work out. You are not high value. And you are gonna pay. You are gonna pay for this mistake when she divorces you. The worst part is yet to come, my guy. Beta box never, never ends well. <laughs> the whole thing is just pure comedy, bro. What high value are you even talking about? A kindergarten teacher making barely more than the minimum wage shows you the same respect she shows to a stray dog on the street. And I bet you 100%, 1000%, he considers himself a high value man because he has a 90k a year job, which is not even that big of a flex anymore. I mean, sure, 90k at 27 is not bad. It is more than the average worker, more than the majority of full-time workers. But like, it ain't the flex he thinks it is. Not anymore. That six-figure salary term was coined decades ago. Was a flex 15 years ago. It is not anymore.
Sure, you can take out a mortgage, even though interest rates are high right now. But still, you can buy yourself a house, a car. But it is not that big of a flex anymore, like it used to be. They didn't fly out 18-year-old Instagram models to Dubai and do to them whatever you want kind of money, you know. I mean, just laughable. The fact that this guy just called himself a high-value man with a straightest face is why I freaking love Manosphere, bro. You are not gonna find better entertainment than this on the internet. <laughs> I bet you anything, if Copper here asked them the question I really wanted him to, in your mind, what makes you a high-value man? You just called yourself a high-value man. What makes you a high-value man when your minimum wage wife treats you like a dog? What do you base that self-proclaimed title on? He would 100% say either his 90k income or that he is watching content creators like Copper and taking online seminars on masculinity and stuff. But of course, Copper failed to deliver that question. Bro, your own wife is calling you those words. What high value are you talking about? No. I mean, I have a good job in the aerospace industry. I'm so, okay, he does say he thinks he's high value because of his job. Okay, I couldn't remember that from the first watch. But like, bro, no job for your face. That is only gonna buy you, buy you some fake companionship. That's all. She's not gonna have real respect for you because she doesn't respect your genes. As simple as that, bro. What did you make last year? About 90. I mean, sure, 90k at 27 is not bad. If everything goes well, this guy can potentially make significantly more at 37, 47. But even then, like, that is the brutal thing. You know for a fact that he's just gonna get married to another gold digger who's just settling for him. And that is the thing about life. One thing that matters the most, that you can spend your entire life chasing after, but can never have, no matter how much money you have. You have so many poorer guys out there making 40k, 50k a year, but they are treated much, much better than Bob by society, by both men and women. One thing that matters the most in life, natural superiority. You can spend your entire life chasing after it. You can acquire as much wealth as possible, but you can never have it. You have tall and good looking guys out there who have much better peace of mind. They are at peace with themselves. You can just tell from their vibes alone. Just from their vibes, you know, how they carry themselves. They have that serenity. They have that inner peace, you know. Then you have 5 8 Bob with a constipated face. The guy is twitching, tweaking, jumping back and forth. <laughs> just look at his face. Just look at his face, bro. Can't stay still and calm for a second. Making weird, constipated expressions. Meanwhile, some 6 4, 7 out of 10 dude I knew back in college. He was poor, legit poor. His only income was that 700 a month something, a student loan he was getting from the government. And he was always happy. Dude, it is 8 a.m. in the morning. I can barely open my eyes. He would be smiling and stuff. Like, he was excited to get up every morning. For him, every day is like a Christmas present waiting to be unwrapped. Wakes up happy. Bob wakes up and his face starts twitching, getting yelled at by his wife. Every day is a brand new insult from his wife, waiting to be unwrapped. <laughs> brutal stuff, man. Just, just brutal stuff. All that money, all that education, all that shiny title couldn't bring Bob that inner peace because he doesn't have that one thing that matters the most in life. And the harder he tried to obtain it artificially by other avenues, the harder it backfired. Beta boxing, being a mainstream politics copper to the point of wearing cringe maxed merch like Donald Trump hat and what have you. And what have you, bro. God knows what else. What cringe maxed activities this guy probably attends to. Watching Fox News and shit. <laughs> okay, but I mean, like, you look like you're from Amish country still, right? Like, you don't look like the kind of guy that you're going to get. Like, I'm just being honest with you, dude. Like, I've, I've seen all the data. You're not looking like the kind of guy that women are going to swipe right on enthusiastically i strongly believe all these guys okay not all these guys but at least the top i up red pillars and successful puas know about the truth a lot more than they let on copper knows in the back of his mind look man you are not gonna get anything with your looks your only option is either oof we do if you beta box deluxe relationship where you will be treated worse than a stray dog on the street in the meantime bob please please give me 4k 
That's all. Cooper knows what's up. He called him Amish looking. This is kind of tough, man. You are gonna look like Bob does. You are gonna get treated like a dog by your school teacher wife. You are a victim of Richard Cooper. You are gonna get called Amish by him. And then on top of all that, you are gonna call yourself a high value man, unironically. <laughs> right. Okay. Is it the beard or? It's the beard. It's the look. You don't look, you know, very strong and masculine. I'd get some new glasses and frames, you know, that, Darn. you know, fit your face better. Get some higher index lenses so you don't get quite the bend in the glass sort of thing. Change your style. Yeah, the shirt kind of sucks. Being real one second and going straight back to copying another. Oh, the shirt. Oh, the glasses. Yeah, dude, it is the shirt. Why he won't get anything. Bro, just stop. I thought Cooper was being real for one second. Went straight back to coping. Um, how tall are you and what do you weigh? 5'8". Uh, I actually got down to 130. I've been doing a lot of exercise. Okay, so you're pretty lean. Yeah, like super lean. Like my BMI is 19 and I've, I do a lot. Okay, so gonna... you got to throw some muscle on that frame now. Broaden out your, like, look at me. Like I'm, like I'm close to 50 and I'm in better shape than you. Like, how is that possible? I don't know. <laughs> See what I'm uh, saying, right? Working like, out just specific just, weightlifting. Just, just do the work, right? You know, put in the reps. Uh, I would join a dojo, learn how to be lethal, right? Like when you start fighting and you start punching people and you start sparring and shit like that, and you knock a guy in the head, that feels fucking good. Okay. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's going to enhance your confidence, right? So the next time a chick tries to tell you off over a toilet seat or a certain hat that you're going to wear, you're going to be like, shut up. I got other options. If you don't like it, I'll just call up so-and-so, right? I can always tell what somebody's belief system looks like by the choices they make every day and what they'll tolerate and the results that they get. So if you just reverse engineers of, you know, from the top of the funnel, results, wife's a bitch. She yells at me over the toilet seat, calls me stupid. Okay, well, what choices is Bob making, right? What, what does his belief system look like? Here's the thing, though. Bob is making the choices he's making because he has no other option. Cooper's entire argument is based on a weak assumption. Bro, he has no options. He tolerates that shit because he has no other option. It is not a real choice. A lot of people call themselves high value men, but they're not. Like, do beautiful women that you want to be with look at you as a high value guy? Do they, do they chase you down? Are they blowing up your phone saying, hey, Bob, what are you doing this weekend? Can you help me out with the what? -da 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 -da? You know? I mean, not, <laughs> not, not now that I'm married, I haven't. You know. Bob, stop. Please, bro. Please stop. Don't put us through more cringe. Oh, now that I am married, beautiful and attractive girls don't chase me to respect my marriage. Dude, stop. Just stop. They never did. Please don't make this more cringe-worthy than it already is. At this point, I am starting to believe this whole entire Menosphere group is just one big parody. This can't be real, bro. You guys are joking, right? Hey, listen, you know, women would rather date a married guy than a guy that lives in his mom's basement. You know, I like, I'm not trying to disparage you or, or put no, you I, down. I'm just stating facts, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm happy to take feedback. And, yeah. And like, learn. I want you to do the work. Like, I want you to come back in a year with like Jack Tan and Juicy as fuck with a nice ass beard and be like, yo, Rich, you're right, man. Again, I think Richard Cooper is smart enough to know more about the BP on a more instinctual level than he lets on. He's saying stuff like, oh, be inject muscles, a beard to lead on his victims. But I think he knows on a deeper level. He knows what's up. Of course, he's going to say stuff like beard and muscles because that is what can be changed easily. If he says you need a new genetic makeup in his sessions where he charges 4K for one hour, you are not going to pay. She's and you make double the money that she does. Like, why aren't you running the household? Oh, like, I, I, I think I, I do in terms of, you know. You don't making... because she's yelling at you over the toilet seat, bro. Well, I mean, I do want to, like, validate. Like, if you, she can't, has... you can't even cut the grass wearing the hat that you want. Well, I'm going to tell oh, you right I, I now, have, the next have... time you go outside, wear the I, shirt I wore that the you Let's want. Wear the wore... shirt that you want and wear the hat that you want. Yeah, I Bob, did. why are you did. wearing that? I told you it's embarrassing. Shut up. <gasps> you can't talk to me like that. I just did. I'm wearing the hat. It's my hat. Then I like she starts, it. So, so this exact scenario happens, and then she just starts cussing me out and then slamming doors. Dude, I'm it's, telling you, it's, it's next to that. impossible to fix a situation where you've already been betatized. Again, he's right when he interprets the result, but the roadmap he gives him is incorrect. Yes, it is impossible to fix that, but not because he has been betatized. His betaization happened before they got married.
all the frame. You are gonna hold the frame. He lost that frame in the first 13 milliseconds, bro. Again, I've never been called stupid. I never get lectured over anything yeah, it's ever. It's nonsense. Stupid is the least of the insults. The insults doesn't matter. Lot, it's still an insult. A lot worse. Like no, like she she's like insulted me with other cuss words, you know, sayings and just. Guys, stupid was one of the better things she said to him. Understand something here, all right? Whenever you hear people say, oh, just look at the couples in real life, dude. You will see so many ugly guys, so many ugly men in relationships. They are dudes like Bob. Females have to face certain realities at some point. Sooner or later, they cannot get men they truly desire. So they have to settle for dudes like Bob to milk their resources. That's it to find a life companion, you know, as a shoulder to cry on, to use and abuse. There's only a certain number of real high-value men that women desire. And after enough failures, she will have to face the reality that men who she lets use her body will not commit to her. She will have to settle and marry someone like Bob. Oh, just go to a mall and look at the couples there. Touch grass, bro. They are guys like Bob. Just cause she's dating him, just cause she's in a relationship with him, doesn't mean she loves him. Some things in life you just gotta tolerate. I was just saying I love a tall boy. Oh. oh. But a marriage is short, but I do love a tall boy. I mean, when y'all divorce, we can, you know what I'm saying? For sure. I mean, <laughs> how about y'all connect right now? I, mean, I, I get your number right now. You're you from here. Why not? Because I'm actually married. Yeah, but you, you don't love him like that if you want to say you want to be like I just a tall love boy. a tall boy. And I am going to wear the hat and I'm going to wear this shirt and I'm not going to be listening about toilets. Just move the fucking seat. The amount of time that it takes you to walk over here and complain to me about the seat is stupid. You move the seat in the direction that it needs to be. Don't bother me with this bullshit again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, Becky. Thank you so much. Re really, really All right, Bob. See you, it. buddy. Rachel, continue to listen to your program. You keep watching Richard Cooper, brother. You keep watching him. You keep watching all those guys. Evidently, they have taken you so far, right? Come Ufi Doofy, go Ufi Doofy. I mean, what do you even say to this man? But this is going to be it for this commentary, guys. Don't be a free agent in life. Don't end up like Bob.